One fundamental discrete structure on which all other discrete structures are built is set. Sets have been used in mathematics since ancient times. It was the 19th century German mathematician George Cantor who was responsible for ensuring that sets had a home in mathematics. Cantor developed the concept of the set during his study of trigonometric series, which is now known as the limit point or the trout set operator. Sets are considered as building blocks of discrete mathematics. Set theory forms the base of several other fields of study like counting theory, relations, functions, graph theory, etc. A set is simply a way to express a collection of objects like a set of students, a set of computers, a set of books, a set of courses, or a set of numbers. You might have learned some elementary facts about sets and set membership along with Venn diagram in your early schooling. You may be well acquainted with the basic operations such as set union and set intersection. Let us revise those concepts and understand sets with whole new perspective the perspective of discrete mathematics and computer science. A set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects. These objects are called members or elements of the set. Now let's understand this definition with some examples. Here are some objects on the screen. Among these items, I want to group those items which belong to computers. That's I want to create a class of objects that are used in computers. So, pen drive is used in computers, so it belongs to that class. Same is the case with monitor, CD, and mouse. But leaves and animals does not belong to computer item category. So they are not put in this category or class. I will continue this process till I check for all the items whether or not they belong to this class. Now if I am given a new item like a RAM chip and I want to check whether it belongs to the above created class or not. Since it is a computer item, so it belongs to this class. This belonging is mathematically denoted as similarly another new item. For example, a pigeon does not belong to this class, parrot does not belong to this class and is mathematically denoted as so principal property about sets is membership or belonging. That is whether a particular item belongs to the set or not. Now tell me whether monitor belongs to the class or not. Yes, it does. But this time we don't need to write it again in our class since we have already included it previously. So another important principle about sets is distinctive nature of objects. That is, duplicate items are not included or written in the set. Again, one more test. This time tell me whether a hen belongs to the above class or not. I can hear you a loud no, but how do you say that it does not belong to the above set? What is the criteria or reason behind your answer? The criterion is never used in computers, so it does not belong to the set. <coughs> that means there is some rule or reason that verifies whether an item belongs to a particular set or not. That is what I mean by the word well-defined in the definition. So well-defined allows us to determine whether a particular object is a member of the set or not. Since we are mainly concerned with membership or belonging of items, the order of the items in a set does not matter. So we can write elements of a set in any order without affecting its meaning or purpose. Now let us take definition of sets once again. A set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects. This time the definition is lucid and crystal clear, isn't it? 
Next, let us understand how to represent sets. There are two ways to represent sets. One way is called or tabular form, another the set builder form. The first roster or tabular form. In roster form, a set is typically expressed by curly braces belonging and closing its items separated by commas. For instance, if A is a set of English alphabets, then we can write it in tabular or roster form as. Here, alphabets, alphabet is the name of the set and the items in the curly braces are its members. And the members are separated by commas. Another way to represent sets is set builder form. Most of the times we do not list items of a set due to some reasons but instead present them with the help of a formula which is called a set or form. A form that can build a whole set. Here we state the properties that characterize the elements in the set. For example, the set of even numbers can be represented in set builder form as here again, even is the name of the set and the statement inside curly braces is read as x such that x modulus 2 is 0. Modulus is an operator and gives the remainder of an expression. Take any number, for example, 20. Now, 20 modulus 2 gives the remainder 0. So, 20 is even. Take another number, 31, and calculate 31 modulus 2 which gives the remainder 1 so it is odd and so on the benefit of using set builder form is that we can represent a large set with the help of small expression similarly to represent the set of all even numbers less than 30 then we can write it in set builder form as